Washington football. Woo! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Burgundy Zone. I am your host, Kyle. I am not joined by my two co-hosts just yet. Michael Reed and Michael Hall should be here very, very soon. But before that, I just want to say the Burgundy Zone is a part of the Frederick Podcast Network. You can find out more by going to www.listenfrederick.com. And thank you for tuning in on this beautiful Thursday afternoon. The title of this episode is New Year's Resolution. So I thought none other bring in our guy, Mr. Anthony Armstrong, former wide receiver of the Redskins and the Believe uh, Commanders podcast. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Thursday, sir. How you doing? I'm good, man. It is it is rainy and dreary down here in Texas. It feels like the whole country is just rainy and dreary. Is that what is that what it is in the DMV? I guess so, but I know in your household it's raining babies as well, sir. I wanted to say congratulations. I know that oh, you uh, that. obviously just got another one on the way. So the house is pretty hectic for you at the moment. I'm sure Adam Peters and company kind of feel that at the moment, <laughs> including <laughs> the stress and non-sleep. And uh, that being said, you know the New Year's resolution for this team. And it's very easy to come out and say, oh, they need O-line, oh, they need this, oh, they need that. For you, Anthony, as a former player looking at this team, what is their New Year's resolution? Hey, can you hear me, Anthony? Uh Hey, can you hear me? Uh Uh-oh, looks like I lost him. Oh, it's probably probably my internet, Anthony. Uh, But what, what would you say the New Year's resolution for the team is? Oh, the New Year's resolution for this team has to be win the division. I mean, that's that's got to be your next goal, especially with how this division always is just jumping around and there's so much change. I mean, literally just a year ago you had the Eagles in the Super Bowl and now they're fumbling and falling into the playoffs and then out of the playoffs. Uh, it, things turn quickly, and with a few right moves and, and a few right additions, I think that you could say that their New Year's resolution has to be win this division, uh, get into the playoffs, and create some uh, some excitement in the city. Yeah, and then looking at the division currently with all the chaos going on for their own right, uh, it looks like uh, Washington would be in a very good chance to be able to do so if they are able to hit in this draft class. But that being said, bringing that up, the draft class coming up, Anthony, what are you feeling at number two? You know, there's there's different factions of the fan base where there's some people Man. that believe that you should uh, take a quarterback there at two. You should possibly trade up. There's some people yeah. saying, wait, I think you should trade back and possibly take an O-lineman. How are you feeling about that? You know, I, I've I've fallen on both sides. And I can and I understand both sides wholeheartedly, like 100%. Um, and I've, I've fought for the, for the saying of, hey, get yourself an, an offensive lineman. Um and and lock that up for the next 10 years like it would be great to know that that position is etched in stone and that left mm-hmm. tackle is going to have whatever quarterback you you have in Washington uh is protected and that's something that you know I think that is good to stand on and, and know that you have you think about historically with the team right they've always had somebody solid over there yeah but then as I watch these playoffs and you see what the things that Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson are doing. The excitement that comes about. I mean, my brother-in-law had 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 posted a picture. He went to the Ravens game. He said, wow, this is what it's like to have a franchise quarterback. Hmm. If you feel like you had that guy at two, I think you got to go that route. So, I mean, what am I telling you to do? I have no clue because I think that I honestly think they're both wins. And this isn't just trying to toe the line. I mean, you could you could really make a strong argument to say, okay, hey, let's let's not go that route and and solidify an offensive line and and really bolster this team. You know, you got to look at the tape more. But do you want to reach for a Drake May at two? Right. You know, if there's a Caleb Williams there, then maybe you're like, hey, now we go that route. So um, with as thorough as they've been in picking G. Are in being uh, selective of their head coach, I'm sure they have multiple options of how they can play this second pick um, in Washington. My man, and I I do agree with you there. But that being said, bringing up the quarterback or what they could do, do you think it's crazy to think that possibly Ben Johnson would be open to the idea of running it back with Sam Howell rather than drafting a quarterback at two? I know everyone is under, myself included, I'm under the thought process of if you're drafting Drake May at two with Ben Johnson, that's the guy he wants, right? But is there a possibility that he could want to run this back with Sam? 
Man, you know, I've I've looked at it with the fact that Ben's had success with a veteran quarterback at the position. Um, and that's not that and you get to benefit from that, especially as a as a young play caller. And you look down in Houston and say, Well, look at Slowick and CJ Stroud. Right now, in my mind, that's a that's one hell of an anomaly. Like those guys are all in sync and everybody's working and growing together. Ideally, that's what you get. Um whenever you get your head coach. So in, in one regard, I can sit here and say that, uh, you know, maybe Bobby Slowick is the guy you need to look, go ahead and get, but I don't think they're going to really let him get out of Houston, right? right? They wouldn't they wouldn't want to, but he's had success working with young quarterbacks, so he knows how to, yep. to communicate to him. But now you know, Ben has had success with a vet, so maybe it would make sense to run it back with, with somebody else. But uh, if there's plays in place, uh, I'm, I'm sure that you could you could keep him, but something something about reaching something about reaching for QBs in UNC just <laughs> don't sit right with me. You know what I mean? It, just in the past few years in history, call me superstitious, but something about it, I, don't, I wouldn't want to jump up and do it. Yeah, I'm with you. Now that being said, you know, talking about the quarterback position and possibly the head coach kind of relationship, Anthony, did you by any chance did were you able to peep on X or Twitter? the the uh, kind of interaction between Jay Gruden and RG3. Did you happen to see that? Do you have a comment on that? Man, I saw that coming through, and I I, I just like, man, y'all get out of here with all of that. Um, there was definitely was, some I, animosity there, man. That, there, that was, there really was. There really was. was I mean, I, I mean, hell, I got I got the one coach that I had some animosity. I had animosity towards a few coaches. I had to start to let that stuff go because it don't do you no good, but <laughs> – um, you know, I, I would love for them two to go ahead and have a conversation and get to talk it out. Um, because shoot, I bet you, you thought the Cat Williams was good. That that might be even better. Like shoot, them two get to talking and they may get to talk about some other stuff that that comes out. So I mean, honestly, man, it's like hey, ideally you wish that you'd be able to have that constructive conversation with your player in a different way, but. Hey, that's how they want to handle it out in the streets. They they grow. They can do as they want to do. Yeah, the timing is just very suspicious given that we're moving forward, Anthony, getting away from that toxicity, you know, and it somehow just gets brought back right onto our dinner plate. You know, let's let's move on from that. Nobody needs to rehash his old things because it's celebrating me- mediocrity at this point. Um, but an- another name that has been floated around as a possible candidate for defensive coordinator, Anthony, was Chris Harris who was the DB's coach here a couple years ago. Have you flirted with that idea? What do you think about that? You know, I honestly haven't gotten that far uh, to think who who the D.C. would even be, you know. Uh, I feel like everybody's focused on on the head coaching spot, and they're focused on, um, you know, that side of things, and they're focused on the offense. And, I mean – I I can I could pitch you a hell of a situation where it makes sense to try to keep the offense together and, and put most of the focus on enhancing and getting the most out of that defense. I mean, frankly, if you walk in the kitchen right now and you just look at what the previous chef was purchasing, you kind of got to cook with what they got. First round DB, second round DB, you know, uh, people that they've assembled on defense are their young talent. So we might as well bring somebody in that can develop that and try to keep some familiarity on offense. And, you know, so, I, you know, you could pitch it both ways, but I don't really know about the defensive coordinator side. Yeah, I'm with you there. And the last question I have for you, Anthony, um, you know, kind of talk, Jonathan Allen spoke out this season and I thought it was uncharacteristic. I was almost somewhat disappointed with John. Do you think that John should be traded? Do you expect him to be traded? Yeah, I bet, I bet they do something. I mean, you you don't you don't go out and say you know that type of stuff and say that you're one thousand percent think about leaving, and he's and he's always you know said the right thing and been on the right side of uh, supporting the team and what what the coaches are trying to do and, and you know, your frustration boils over but you know when you when you do that and he likes to communicate through the media from from you know, just from recent history he's essentially saying hey yeah go ahead and get me out of here like I, I want to go elsewhere so. Uh, I, I do see that happening. That's like another part of the play that you could look at. Like, okay, maybe you you start to say trade back and include a player, and then you know maybe that keeps you in a high position to still, you know, get the impact player, but you get more draft capital. So I, I do think that uh, ninety three will be on the move uh, this off season. Man, I got gonna, one question real quick that's gonna be because I just saw some breaking news that Raheem Morris just got hired by the Falcons. 
Mm. which leaves a guy, a couple guys like Mike Vrabel, Bill Belichick out there, as far as probably might not get a job this hiring cycle. Would you be open? Would you think that whoever the new coach is, probably a younger guy like a Ben Johnson as a head coach, would be open to a, a guy like a Vrabel or a Belichick coming in as a D.C., knowing that they have head coach experience and – you know, they kind of come from teams where they kind of had a little bit of power to Man. themselves. Who flirted how with you, that Belichick? Uh, how do you think a head coach – how do you think a first-time head coach look, would uh, feel about that? Look, look, look. You go look at all these other young – look at all these other young head coach teams. Vic Fangio was down there in Miami with Mike McDaniel, right? That's true. That's true. Um, you look at, at original – Vic Bay brought in Wade Phillips back in Wade the Phillips, yeah. right? Um who else is doing it? Uh, multi, uh, in uh, Kevin Stefanski with Jim Schwartz is doing it. Uh, Brian Dayball had had Wink Martindale. I mean, yes, mm. he got fired, but there's a thing now. Let let them go handle it. You're brought in here to do the offensive thing. You're you ain't, you're under forty, so it makes a lot of sense. And to me, I've been talking about this uh, just in other business circles. You talk about burnt out. I mean. Bill Belichick's been the head of this organ, the head of that organization for what, 25 years, something like that, for a very long time. He's right. been the head coach. Um, I bet it would be rejuvenating to go and be a defensive coordinator. And once right. again, to look, to look in the pantry and see, I got this DB, this little young DB that we kind of like. I got some defensive linemen. I can he he's already had success with a lot of unknown players. You may find you might see Jamin Davis like his game may jump up. Uh, Cam Curl, imagine how he get utilized yeah. with the creativity uh, of of what Bill Belichick could try to do. I mean, it makes sense to me. And then you talk about have it. It sounds weird to say it. Uh, it, it, it adds some sex appeal, like it'd be a sexy, sexy hire, weird hire. <laughs> it's weird to talk about an old man in a sexy way, but you get what I'm saying. That's what happens when you come on the Burgundy Zone, Anthony. It gives you the big name. <laughs> it gives you the big name, right? Because yeah, if you're not going to get some cash in to the defense as well, yeah, right. And then you want to see some different things. I mean, the, the guy's gone from three four to four three with all types of players. He put receivers on at DB sometimes, and I mean. You're right. They're, 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 I tell you what, they're going to be well coached. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They yeah. won't be missing you talk, tackles. You out talk there about like accountability. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I said, you better not hear no talk about, well, accountability. Everybody coaching me too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, I can't I, thank you enough for taking some time out for us, brother. I hope you have a great weekend. Enjoy your time down in Texas. Uh, enjoy the, the try to enjoy some uh, sleep and some quiet when you can. You know, new babies in the house. Oh, yeah. Can't thank you enough, brother. Have a good night. Absolutely, Appreciate man. Appreciate y'all. Y'all be good. You too, Anthony. All right, everybody. We just spoke with the man, Mr. Anthony Armstrong, and that is my fault for the scheduling issues, you know, but I wanted to get Anthony on here. Um, it was all my fault. A new job site, and I'm, you know, obviously I'm getting really busy and ahead of myself there, which is all my fault. But now we <laughs> are joined by our next guest in Mitch Tischler. And thank you, sir. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, boys. How are you? A little breaking news happening here, so trying to... Yes, sir. Okay. Just saw the breaking news myself. With Raheem Morris? Yeah. yeah, just trying to juggle two things at once, but excited for Raheem. I think it's a great opportunity for him. I love the fact that he's getting a shot in this uh, hiring cycle, and at the end of the day, I don't know whether he's going to be successful there because of the end of the, because there's no quarterback, but I do think he's a fantastic uh, 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 coach, and I think he'll have every opportunity to succeed uh, and win. My man. And Mitch, the title of this episode is The New Year's Resolution. Um, and so if you're Adam Peters, if you're sitting in that front office, if you could just come out with a New Year's Resolution for this season, what would it be for this football team? Stability. Uh, have, a, have, a, have, a, have a stable season. Set up this thing for long-term success. It's tough to turn around in a team in, in one season. Uh, I mean, there has been 19 of the last 21 years, there's been uh, a division team that went from from – last to first i don't know that it's going to be the commanders this year but there's nothing saying that it won't be the commanders this year but at the end of the day um to me it's not about necessarily winning this year it's about putting a good foundation right. in the earth and finding something to build off it's getting your your gm getting your head coach letting that head coach pick his coordinators you know working with those coordinators to fill out their staffs you know getting yourself in a position where uh you're not fighting to to to, to turn it all around in, in one quick season, but but setting yourself up for the future. 
Definitely, definitely. And speaking of that head coach, like obviously there's been a lot of uh, smoke around Ben Johnson to Washington for a couple weeks now. But with the news that uh, the Carolina Panthers, who were going to be really interested in uh, Ben Johnson as well, they just hired the <laughs> offensive coordinator from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as their new head coach. And then you just talked about Raheem Morris uh, getting the job in Atlanta. Do you think that it's – I'm not going to say a lock, but almost virtually a lock that – Ben Johnson is probably going to be the next head coach here in Washington. Yeah. I mean, between uh, the Titans, the Panthers, and and now the uh, Falcons all hiring head coaches, I believe the only two open jobs left, if I'm not mistaken, are Seattle and, and Washington. Um, Seattle's been certainly rumored heavily for, uh, for Dan Quinn, um, who's coming in here to DC this weekend for a, a second in person. But you know, the musical chairs are, are starting to arrange themselves and there's only really two left. So it's uh, it's going to be between, you know, the commanders and and uh, and Seahawks. And quite frankly, you know, there's nothing stopping the Seahawks from saying, hey, Ben, here's 20, 20, 25 mil a year, you know, come be our head coach. But I think I believe I firmly uh, trust that uh, he's going to that Ben Johnson's going to be the next uh, head coach here in D.C. Yeah, and Dan Quinn was a defensive coordinator in Seattle before, before he left for Atlanta, right? And so that reunion obviously makes a lot of sense. How you doing, Reed? I'm fantastic. You know, I'm a lot better now that I know Mitch is here. Now that Mitch is here, now I see Mitch. I'm like, <laughs> yes, yes. Mitch, so there, there's a PFF, I think it was PFF, released the ranking of uh, free agent DBs. The commanders have two guys inside the top ten. They have uh, Kendall Fuller and Cameron Curl. Which one of those two guys would you prioritize first? Kendall Curl. Cam Cam Curl. <laughs> My guy. I mean, yeah. a thousand times over, Cam Curl. Um, Kendall Fuller would make sense at the right contract. Um, I, ultimately, if you're a team that's building the future, I don't know that re-signing uh, of aging DB is you know is the most it keeps is is on the same track as everything else you're trying to do. But at the same time, you do need that leadership um, in that locker room. And you know, uh, on on our podcast, we we're just discussing a little bit of some of the possible defensive coordinators and guys who might come in, which, you know, the, you can kind of toss out a hundred names. Somebody has got to bring some grit to that defense. Someone's got to bring some cohesiveness. Someone's got to bring some fire. And, uh, and part of that is going to be, you know, I've talked, I've, I talked after the season about, you know, you need to bring in somebody who's going to lead on the, from the player's side in that locker room. And, you know, I don't want to take any digs against the guys who are captains in that locker room now, but, I think you can see the way that that defense has come out the past couple of seasons and they don't come out and play with fire and they don't come out and play together. And you can sit there and, you know, yell into the cameras and say all the things you want, but True. on deaf ears with your teammates, then you're probably not doing the right thing. And so, you know, I don't know that like London Fletcher is out there, but you need a guy like London, a veteran, a guy who can still play football. You're not bringing in a guy just to, you know, just to play kid, right? You need someone who can play football but you need someone who can lead as well and show a lot of these young guys kind of the correct way to win in the NFL. And, you know, it's not John Allen's fault. It's not Deron Payne's fault. It's not Cam Curl's fault that they've been in a locker room that's been devoid of, you know, leadership along the way. But, you know, basically their entire NFL experience has been in D.C. And it's been, you know, with the lackadaisical leadership from coaching which I think has has filtered down into the locker room and created a little bit of a void. And so, you know, you do have leaders on that team like Terry McLaurin, but he's not a guy that's going to stand up and and you know get things done. He's a he's a hey follow you know follow my lead. Right. You need somebody who has the correct wording, the correct gravitas in that locker room hmm. to stand up there and make guys look at you and get them fired up to play some effing football. Absolutely, Mitch. Sometimes you just got to grab everybody by the balls, uh, kind of like Reed on the weekends. But my next question for you, you know, you big man, you know, the, the title is thick. We love thick boys right here. And we want to talk about the offensive line. How, what was your opinion of the offensive line right now? You know, because you're talking about player retention. Charles Leno is a, a potential cap casualty. And you're going to have possibly a lot of turnover there. Is there anybody right now starting that you would want to bring back next year? Yeah, I mean, there's guys you're going to bring back. Uh, Sam Cosby, I think, is your sh- should be probably your only starter that yeah. comes back. Um, I don't mind necessarily if Charles Leno comes back, but I'd like for him to come back more in the Cornelius Lucas role where he's, you know, kind of a veteran guy and, and maybe your backup swing tackle and, you know, in a pinch can step inside and play a little guard or whatever. Um, after that, there's not a lot other than the draft picks that, that I really mm. care too much about. I mean – 
you know, not to not to say anything, you know, too bad against these guys, but it's not a very good offensive line, and they didn't invest a lot into it. And quite frankly, there's not a lot there that that's that exciting to keep. I mean, you know, Morgan Moses is is playing on Sunday in an NFC Championship AFC I Championship know. game. Commanders fans couldn't wait to run him out of town because they got so spoiled with good tackle play and good good O line play, and now all of a sudden, four years removed from that, we're looking and like. Boy, I wish I had a guy who was that consistent, um, you know, and that and that injury, not proof, but that a guy who can stay on the field like he can. And you know, I, I think it's a it's a good learning curve for Commanders fans and you know for folks who watch football because they were spoiled for you know twenty years in a row having uh, um, Curtis Samuel, Curtis Samuel having uh, <laughs> what is it? Who am I thinking of? Chris Samuel. Chris Samuel, thank you. <laughs> Having Chris Samuel and uh, and Trent Williams there, and now all of a sudden, you know, you're seeing what happens when you don't invest in the position. So, I think ultimately, uh, Cosme is back. I think you know you hope that uh, Stromberg can be your starting center, uh, and then from there, I think you're filling it out through the draft and free agency. All right, love to hear it. Now to wrap this up, I only have a couple more questions for you, sir. But Mitch, you got any inside deets on? With RG three versus Jay Gruden, um, I would love to hear <laughs> what what your thought is on that entire altercation. I guess if you could call it even that, it's certainly entertaining for me to watch because I was I was covering the team then, and there's a lot that um, there's a lot of things that I know happened that didn't happen in public, but happened with that team. So to see those guys. I got nothing for you. Spill the beans. Come those on. Guys, <laughs> see, this is exactly why. So okay. to see those guys ha- hashing it out in public, fine. I think it brings out the worst in Redskins mm-hmm. fans, Washington football. Yeah, oh, yeah. Or do we curse on this pod? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Curse as much as you want, dude. Have you heard me? <laughs> that shit is old news. Like, it, yes. has, it has nothing to do with it's anything not. that's happening. And not you, but you all people listening and people consuming and everyone tweeting about it are part of the problem. Who gives a shit what happened with RG three and Jay? The shit is over with Dan Snyder's gone. Jay's gone. RG three is a guy who's looking for attention on social media. You can <laughs> and sit there and consume it and laugh and laugh inside your head. But for it to turn into podcast segments and radio segments and TV segments and fan base and people arguing about whose side they're on, who cares? We are beyond <laughs> that shit. That, that petty Winning off the fi- off the field shit, get doesn't matter to what's happening now and has no bearing on anything that's, that's moving forward. And while it's a slow time in the NFL for Commanders fans because they're not in the playoffs, I hate that folks are glomming onto this and turning into a bigger thing than it is. Mitch, I love you, man. I, who knew that this? Right. Who knew that this like that question was going to get you? This probably the most animated you've been we on all, the show. Can we all admit though that Jay Gruden is undeniably funny. When he tweeted oh, the pigeon thing, yes. I was like, "Damn, Jay, <laughs> Jay!" Listen, Jay's hilarious. At, to me, the best one was, "Sorry, Robert, we didn't have a good enough staff." When you look yeah, back, yeah, yeah. Staff <laughs> was like, that went over so many before. people's heads. That went over so many people's heads. Like, it's, that was well, a good it's one. funny to yeah. laugh at, and I and I enjoyed it myself watching it. And yeah. then the following day or days on Twitter, when people are you know quote tweeting and trying to add to it and urge it on and all this stuff, I, I, I think, just. I think it it just it, it's you know you got the devil on your shoulder and the and right. the and the angel <laughs> it just it it lets commanders redskins fans dive into that devilish side. See, I love that drama. I think we should become a drama channel to be honest with you, but uh <laughs> well, I think part of it is Will Compton blowing up over like the last year or so and getting so big on like busting with the boys and stuff and the fact he was there and he tweeted about it. It was like this is, I was there like both people or they both there's bodies buried on both sides. It was like that made it kind of blow up into a national spotlight. Well, and that's the funny thing is think like, about it this way, real quick. Will Compton was on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, Will Compton was on the defensive side of the ball. I period. Got I got yeah. There's I some got people you. who have who, who know a lot more. There are people in the public eye who have podcasts that have the opportunity to talk about it, who are on the offensive side of the ball and have been around, whether in the media and elsewhere, who could add a lot to this story. And I, I'm glad they're not because I want to. <laughs> I know exactly what it is, and I think he needs to hurry up and come back on here soon. Yeah, <laughs> I agree with you. Look, I just my best look, friend. 
No, I just, there's the elephant in the room, Mitch, and I just want, you know, kind of just to be, you know, but we can't bring that into light. I get it. We're, we are I moved know, on. Right? I said that earlier. I just wanted to get, you know, it's the off season. We got to have a little oh, fun yeah. here, Mitch. There's only a handful of questions I got for you, but only two more that I have for you. Listen, hold on real quick. I don't blame you for asking. I've been waiting for an opportunity to have that mini rant. Because <laughs> I, like, just following it all on, on I, like, I am glad that in a... Uh, more formal uh, setting. I haven't been asked about it because I, 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 I like saying what I said, but it's one of those things that just, I, I think that, you know, this fan base has, has, has meddled in off field controversy for 20 years. And we're finally at the precipice where we're pushing all of that stuff behind us. And like one last, like, you know, one last firework going off at the end of the fireworks right. show is yeah. popping off and folks are like, Oh, that's fun. I remember that. That was, you know, <laughs> instead of like, hey, we're, they hired the number one GM candidate out there. They're about to hire the number one head coach candidate out there. They have the number two overall pick. They're going to rebuild this entire thing in a professional way. And we're finally going to be able to sit here. I hope at on January 25th, 2025 at 5 15 PM, we're talking about the X's and O's of the offense and, you know, what we want to see out of uh, Jaden Daniels or, or Caleb May and, you know, we're discussing Ben John- Ben Johnson did a great job of doing this. And, hey, I want to see the defensive coordinator do more of this instead, instead of, you know, who who banged whose girl. And, and, and who- <laughs> instead of in 2014, 11 years ago, we were. Uh... <laughs> no, you're absolutely right, Mitch. But to wrap this up, I only have a couple more questions for you. That being said, you talked about the rookie quarterbacks at number two. Is there a, are you on the boat of? you want to go with quarterback or do you think that the trading back should be the ideal thought process? But if you do want quarterback, do you have a favorite at the moment? It's, it's a hundred, hundred percent quarterback to me. And yeah. you know, I love O-line, but like when you, you're only going to have an opportunity to pick in the top five so many times with a slam dunk, you know, quarterback right. at, at two. Um, I think to me, I think Jaden Daniels is a more impressive prospect. And ultimately I think that as we get closer to the draft, the bears are going to start, you're going to start hearing some stuff about the Bears. Oh, are we going to go Jaden Daniels or Caleb Caleb Williams? Which way do we go with this thing? Um, because I think once Jaden Daniels weighs in, you know, runs a four three forty, and the mm-hmm. folks start getting a chance to talk to him and and at the combine and all that stuff, I think he's gonna he's gonna become a lot more um, exciting of a prospect. But to me, it too, I I don't know that there's a huge difference between any of those three. I don't I don't rank one of them. As I don't think Caleb Williams is, you know, hands down the best of those three. What it comes, what it's going to come down to for me is what does Ben Johnson want to do with his offense? Because you have two drastically different quarterbacks. Right. And if you draft a Jaden Daniels into a into the offense the Lions are running right now, I don't know that it's going to be that successful. If you draft draft Caleb May into uh, you know a mobile quarterback offense, I don't know that he's going to be the most successful there. So I think the most important thing, if and when Ben Johnson gets hired is to find out what kind of offense does he want to run. Is he just doing an incredible job in Detroit right now of changing his offense to what Jared Goff does well? Right. And ultimately, he likes mobile quarterbacks and guys that can get out of the pocket and do some stuff with their legs? Or is he does he like what he sees out of Jared Goff and their offense right now and he wants to kind of continue it? So, you know, you can look at drafting the best player, but there's also kind of best player that fits. Mm. And uh, to me, I think when, we get, when you get to that uh, – <clears throat> Second pick, it's going to be interesting to see kind of, you know, what kind of offense Ben wants to run and and who makes the most sense there. I wholeheartedly agree with you, sir. Um, I can't thank you enough for joining us tonight, uh, Mitch. It's always been a pleasure uh, being able to pick your mind a little bit, being able to find out what's going on here. But actually, let me ask one more question. I do want to ask you this one. Bill, would you be against the thought of Bill Belichick being a defensive coordinator? If he came in as just the defensive coordinator? Sure. Okay. I wouldn't be against it. I mean, you're talking about arguably the best defensive or one of the best defensive minds in NFL history coming in. Sure. I, I don't want him having player con- player personnel control. Right. And I don't want him having, you know, an, even an associate head coach title where he can kind of step on Ben John or whoever the head coach's feet are. <laughs> um, you got you to catch yourself a little bit because as much as we think it's going to be Ben Johnson, True. there's no 100% Man. guarantee. Man. So, you know, I, to me, I, I was doing this earlier. I was looking at, um, you know, kind of the rest of the Shanahan tree. And Kyle Shanahan's the only one of that group between uh, LaFleur and KOC and McVeigh who 
when he got his first head coaching job, brought in a young defensive coordinator with him. Both all three of McVay, KOC, and um, and uh, uh, whoever the third guy, Lafleur, all had kind of veteran defensive coordinators with them. And I like the theory of bringing in a veteran guy who can kind of help out your head coach. But all three of those DCs got fired within two years. And so to me, it's most important to bring in the best defensive coordinator that you can find, Mm -hmm. whether he's a young up and coming mind or he's an old head. Because Mm -hmm. if you believe that Ben Johnson or whoever your head coach is, is the guy that's that can lead your team, then you don't necessarily need somebody else to to come in and support it. And Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's a lot of different different ways to go with it, but that's that's kind of where I'm at. My man, I can't thank you enough, Mitch. It's been a pleasure being able to speak with you again, sir. And until next time, you know, we'd we'll, we'll love to talk to you, sir. Have a good weekend. Uh, happy to do it. What are you guys getting into the rest of the pod? Uh, we got. I think we have Felix coming on here next. A couple fan questions, but not not all that much. You know, it's the off season. Yeah. We all have the same refurbished questions. You know how it goes, man. Yeah, we don't want to. Question. We don't want to stoke that Jay Gruden RG3 fire anymore. That takes out <laughs> half of our episode. <laughs> After that rant, that's all we're going to talk about. I didn't mean to poo poo your episode. About that. No, you did not. No, you just made it 10 times better. 10 times better, Mitch. <laughs> Have a good weekend, brother. Can't thank you. All right, Jets. Thanks. Appreciate Have a good one. It. All right, everybody. We just spoke with the man, Mr. Mitch Tischler. Um, I always appreciate Mitch. I know that he wanted to stay on here longer, and I feel bad. What so a great we, rant. I know, right? He was like, man, I'm already chilling for a while. I might always keep on going with I it. I know, but, but we have, like, fan questions. You know, I don't want to I don't want to jip our guys, man. They take a lot of time to <laughs> do that for us. Uh, Reed, yeah, it takes up a lot of room. <laughs> Reed, I can't thank you enough for joining us, brother, uh, for this episode as a special guest. Thank you. How are you doing? You're welcome, Kyle, because you don't pay me enough, dude. I know. <laughs> now, this next <laughs> question this question is submitted Bart. on the Discord by our Bo guy. Bogart that money. Chris Comerton, the Lions offensive line coach Hank Fraley, has put together a good O-line. When we land Johnson, do you think he will bring Fraley along and make him his OC, Hall? Yeah, um, if you listen to guys like Mike Garofolo and all the national guys that are plugged in and know the, the what's what about the league and what they're talking about, that's been the the consensus that uh, he's going to bring Fra- – uh, uh, what's his name? Haley, right? Fraley. Frank Haley? Hank Fraley. Hank Fraley, yeah, I got the idea. But yeah, they're gonna. He's gonna bring him. I, I, I heard that he's like a Gaithersburg native from the area, so yep. definitely be a good match and uh, definitely go uh, bowls well. As long, uh, I think he's gonna be the offensive coordinator, like they said. And having a, a offensive line coach as your offensive coordinator is definitely a smart move. Offensive line coach are like some of the smartest coaches on the entire coaching staff. They got so much responsibility. They know the as far as the playbook and the offense goes, just as far as like game planning and all that. So definitely, and you see what the Lions' uh, offensive line obviously is look, has been looking like for the past couple of years. Right. Obviously, they have good players on the line, but you still got to coach them up and whatnot. So uh, definitely, I think that would be the uh, the move, and it would be a, gr- a good move. Yep. And Chris, it's funny because you know I, I put this at Discord. I put tweeted this out last week. The Moco Show, which is like one of very popular Facebook page here locally in the DMV, um, it tweeted out that the offensive line coach for Detroit went to Gaithersburg High School, uh, graduated as a Trojan, and you know that I don't. I'm not sure if he graduated as a as an Eagles fan, if he's a Cowboys fan, Giants fan. Like most he played years. for the Eagles, apparently. Yeah, he played he for the like, Eagles. For a while. I'm not sure if he's like most of the people in this area, the fans of other teams. But uh, if he is a Washington fan, I think that's a really good idea to bring him here. But also on the flip side of that, if you are hiring Ben Johnson as your head coach, it would be smart to bring some consistency with him. But the big question here, Chris, is who is Detroit going to allow to leave? Because their big problem is, okay, who's going to be our OC now? And I think that I think Mark Brunell would be very intriguing for them as an OC more so than the offensive line coach, I think, long-term thinking. So uh, it would be – I think it's a good chance we'd be able to pull Fraley away. That's the other thing. I mean, uh, the coaches can leave if they get uh, – if it's uh, – if they're taking a step up, right? So like Hank Fraley yeah. would be able to leave to take an offensive coordinator role going from O-line coach. Um, but, yeah, I mean, their coaches have this four of – pool of former players and, and like uh i went down the list because i was curious about this when ben johnson was first like it was being considered that he was like the number one guy like he was probably going to sign here and you look at the guys who he's coached with like on the offensive side of the ball there there's a good amount of guys there's a good amount like when back when he was with miami and of course the early days of detroit he was under matt patricia but then like he kind of grew with brunel and antoine randall and hank fraley and, and these guys so it's very interesting to see who he would bring on here like uh he coached with um Zach Robinson as well, the uh, offensive coordinator for the Rams. Um, 
So it's, I mean, it's definitely interesting. I, I love the idea of Hank Freely, though. He, telling me that big old boy who's a former player who prioritizes the O-line and he would be running Ben Johnson's offense and getting guys prepared. Like, he want somebody like that slap dicking around, getting in players' faces. Not like EB. Not like EB, but, you know, getting in a guy's face. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'd be pumped about it. I would love Hank Freely. I just, honestly, whatever they do, I'm that, we're all those fans. I'm not just going to say me, but we're going to be like, this is awesome. This is going to be the best signing ever. This was such a smart move. And then, I don't know, about two weeks into the season, we're going to be like, fire them. Get them all out of here. <laughs> one of the worst but things no, I heard in our one uh, group chat on, on Twitter, the dude said the EB's little, uh, little Bill. Like, you know, the cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good laugh for a little bit. I was like, dude, yeah. come on, bro. Uh, now, uh, next question, funny. Reed. This is from Scott Hartley in the UK. Oi! Thank Oi. you, Scott. Oi. Of all the head coaching candidates, who has the best scheme to make this team win? Defense with McDonald or offense with Benjamin uh, with Ben Johnson or Slowick? So it's it's super tough. I mean, obviously, I mean, you look at somebody like Slowick. I still think Slowick's probably a year away, but just like the work that he did with Houston's offense under coming up as or his taking his first head coaching job, he was a PFF guy, came to the NFL as a defensive coach. Just I mean, that's where he was assigned first because got to understand both sides of the ball and then working his way up on offense. What he did, obviously, with C.J. Stroud is fantastic. I mean, the game plan was awesome. The routes that they were running seemed fantastic. So you, you got to really like what Slowick does. I still think Slowick's a year away. Ben Johnson, obviously, the work that he's done with Jared Goff. And, I mean, just that Lions offense, prioritizing the O-line, saying that they're not out there to show off their weapons. They're out there to show off the big uglies up front, the offensive line. He lets music to your ears. At the same time, if they're – I mean, I, I think it's obvious – Ben Johnson's going to be the higher by all accounts. He's a fantastic leader. He listens to players. Players love him. Uh, so that bodes well for him. Mike McDonald, I think, not Mike McDonald. No, my, yeah, it is Mike McDonald. I was thinking of Mike McDaniel at first. I was like, that's not him. I don't want logic over here right now. <laughs> but uh, McDonald, McDonald's going to be a fantastic coach in the NFL. Like, if he doesn't come here, like, by all accounts, everybody respects him. You see what he's done with Baltimore's defense. I mean, he's not about to get a head coach. He'd love job. to have that here after Jack Del Rio. I mean, that's for sure. But I, I'm still, I'm leading Ben Johnson just because, you know, why not? We want to see this offense home, baby. And the only thing I'd add on that, Scott, is that obviously Adam Peters talking about leadership in that aspect. Yeah. If you look at the Steelers, it, was it a bad idea for them to go to Tomlin in that leadership aspect as a defensive minded head coach? So I'll say, I, I, I can't really say what is probably best overall. I just think it's all about the vision and everyone being on the same boat, you know, and having the same thing going on here. And that's all that really truly matters for this football team. As well, to as add to that real fast, if there was a, if there was a prospect, like when, uh, when we drafted Chase Young, like if there was a big edge defender or somebody, a big defender defender that you were going to take at number two, that was like arguably the best player in the draft and you were going to be able to get him. I probably want a defensive coach to come over here and be like, coach this guy up, do that. And uh, even though it didn't really work out with Rivera and code, like that's kind of what you want. So the fact that it's a quarterback and you can get a quarterback whisperer in here to kind of grow with them, I think that that kind of bodes well for Ben Johnson. Yeah. And now this next question from big Tony Shivers hall. If we keep both second round picks, who are some guys you would love to draft that you think will be available? Reed, I know you love drafts. You can answer this too if you want. Uh, I haven't even really even been looking at the draft and all that whatnot yet, but I would say that just based on the holes and what they need, uh, I would say tight end could be on the board in the second round, and I would say maybe linebacker in the second round is uh, maybe with one of the – either one of those picks. So, uh, yeah, I would say uh, linebacker – or a tight end definitely and uh maybe like no well, we already have enough quarterbacks so yeah maybe an offensive lineman again or maybe offensive lineman or something like that but between those three positions i would say that uh between those two second round picks unless they acquire some more or trade one or whatever it may be but i think those are, those three positions are on the board in the second round yeah i love this question tony i do think it does matter what they do like i love the idea of copying what Houston did last year with CJ Stroud and getting Tank Dell in the second round you could draft a guy like Xavier Leggett out of uh, South Carolina Love who's Leggett. like 6'3 yeah. 222 runs a 4'3 insane big, catch radius he makes great catches he'd be somebody who could long term you'd be adding with the quarterback here and obviously that paid dividends for Houston it'd be something that's a copycat league right but also I would love the idea of going with Cooper BB of going with a guy like Tyler Guyton possibly at right tackle of that sense you even have Graham Barton there, but I've kind of toned down a little bit on Graham Barton. Uh, he's not a tackle. He's more so of a guard. But you have some like uh, Jackson Powers as well. The center from Oregon is there. There's a lot of 
a lot of prospects there that I really like. But honestly, I cannot leave the second round without TJ Tampa. Just the way that the algorithm is setting up and the way that it's looking, TJ Tampa is probably your only one that you could say could combat into a number one corner and from that second round on that you could feel confident in. And Ian Cunning, uh, Ian Cummings told us on Monday or Sunday that he's even mocked him in the first round. So there's no there's a chance he might not even make it to the second at this point. And so I, I really want to get a corner in here, but some people don't believe it's as important as others, but I will just say this. Like, the number one corner is something we've been trying to find for a long time, ever since Daryl Green left, and uh, it'd be a good time to be able to get one. Yeah. Um, I'm So, just, I mean, it obviously a lot depends on free agency because, like, you look at edge rusher. Like, obviously we need an edge rusher. This right. year's edge rushing time doesn't really support, doesn't really rope you in too much. Like, it's, it's not as good as past years. I mean, there's still obviously some guys there that that could be there. And we all know Kyle likes guys. Like, if, if the guy's there, Kyle's all about it. Um, but I'm honest, dude. And look, this might be unpopular because our defense was so bad. I am 100% okay if they go quarterback with doubling up on O line with our, for both our second round picks. I'm all right with it. Bring in a Graham Barton or a Van Pran if, if he, say, he rises a little bit more. Bring in a center, like, because Graham Barton can apparently play center as well as projected there, guard it, like you said, Kyle. Uh, give give me a a Patrick Paul at, at offensive tackle or one of those one of those three Samoan boys because I think the kid from a BYU is going to rise up some boards too. He's got all the potential in the world. Like yeah, Ian talked about him on Monday. He said that literally he's like basically built like a prototypical left like tackle. He's he's hundred percent dude. He's athletic as hell. Sometimes his tape and stuff gets a little you know it's a it's a little off. He's been beat a lot, but like it's there. if you can get the right O line coach Hank Fraley, you know who knows uh, some can mold him. Yeah, 100%. So, like, I'm all about doubling up on O-line. If we're only really keeping Cosby for this starting group, go out there, get a center or another guard and an offensive tackle, and let's just go. Let's just let all these guys grow together. I'm 100% for it. Keep this quarter. Keep Drake May. Keep him upright. <laughs> My man. Now, this next question from Orange Crush 92 Hall. What are the odds that Washington throws a draft pick someone's way for a player? Who could the player be and which pick would be given for the team, for them? <sighs> I don't even. I couldn't. I don't see them trading a player or a pick for a player. I could see the the opposite. Like we talked about, John Allen. Uh, yeah, John Allen. Uh, I don't really. There's really not anybody else that's really like trade baitable right now that I can off the top of my head. But I definitely think that it would be the other way around. I mean, maybe Deron Payne, but he's the younger of the two D tackles, and you want to keep at least one of those guys. And but uh. Yeah, I would say that uh, John Allen, like it would be vice versa. They would be trading a player for maybe like a, a second or third round pick for John Allen. And uh, yeah, but if they would have traded a pick for a player, I could definitely see them trading some picks for like a vet quarterback. Mm. Maybe that's all like out there. But yeah, like I said, I don't see that happening just because Adam Peters talking about he wants to build through the draft and supplement through free agency. So definitely, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so first off, J.C. Horn. I definitely think that that's somebody you could target because uh, Tepper's an idiot, and with the new GM installed, you might be able to work some of your magic to be able to, you know, coerce him possibly for a lower round pick, and I would absolutely love that. Uh, the other one that I'll say is, like, obviously Max Crosby would absolutely love, you'd love to get that guy prime away from Vegas, but it's most likely not going to happen. They, they so, just hired Antonio Pierce, man. If they right, I was going to say, back, he was threatening yeah. if they didn't hire Pierce, right. he was going to get a trade, but right. they right. just hired exactly. him. Exactly, so. but now that they've <laughs> taken him out, so he's taken out the window, right? The one question... He's bullied, bullied uh, what's his name, Mark Davis into hiring Antonio Pierce, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah have you uh, seen he, the guy's haircut? Was, you you can bully him in the fucking anything. haircut. <laughs> haircut. Yeah. You bring Antonio Pierce back here. Uh, but one name that I'll float out there, um, because we don't know exactly how the cap situation is going to play out because they have to make a lot of decisions down the line. But that being said, with Dallas, with Minka uh, Persons, because they have to pay CD. They got Trayvon Diggs coming up. Most likely Trayvon's going to leave. They're paying Dak a crap load of money. Tony Pollard's on his way out. They, what's going to go on with Zach Martin? So they got a lot of questions there. Is there a, a possibility that you'd be able to pry that away? Most likely not because that's Jerry's boy. But I'm just throwing it out there. That is something to hypothetically speak about. And us needing an edge, that's a couple guys I could think of off the top of my head without knowing everybody that's out there and who's possibly available. But, yeah, I, I would love the idea of doing that. Oh yeah, obviously I would love the idea of getting Patrick Mahomes too. You know, <laughs> no, no, I'm saying of, I'm saying of trading like a lower. I'm saying of trading a lower level pick for an edge rusher. It's already currently in the NFL rather than using that on a rookie DN because we've already seen KJ Henry. We're already you know kind of 
grooming them into being starters. And so you don't want to just add another one into the pot. You want to actually get somebody who's sustained, right? And that's what I'm Yeah. Talking. Like the best side rusher in the NFL. <laughs> just saying, man. <laughs> <laughs> From our division rival. Right. Let's see. <laughs> Come here, you peasants. Give us all your good players. You never know. Give man. the king your good players, you bitches. <laughs> but they do have they have a lot of questions going on. They I, do, they do have a lot of questions. Because OC's just, talked I, about them possibly unloading Dak, which is a which is an idea. That would be funny. They're not gonna do that. And you love getting Dak. You love getting some Dak on <laughs> <laughs> That weekend Dak. Come this on, next, man. You know you want some Dak. This next question, this <laughs> one's from Tim Towner. Tim Towner Hall. <laughs> which teams win the conference championships and make it to the Super Bowl? <laughs> Um, well, if you believe the, the Super Bowl logo conspiracy is going to be the Ravens and the 49ers, but I mean, to be, if we're being completely honest, just football wise and matchup wise, I could definitely see the San Francisco edging out the Lions just based off of also how often do you see San Francisco play that bad of a game? Like, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like they're going to come out hitting on all cylinders. Sure, they played it against Baltimore. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But Baltimore, you rarely see them play two games back to back that are just yeah. like all around bad and on both sides of the ball, at least. One side of the ball is going to get it together, especially mm-hmm. for this game. But uh, I see a close game with San Francisco beating Detroit, even though I would love to see Detroit get to the Super Bowl just because it gives a uh, Washington fan hope that like they were just down in the dumps just like us and they've built it up the right way. And now they're at the highest level, about to be at the highest level in football, maybe. And on the other side, um, it's going to be a great game between Lamar and Pat Mahomes. One of the best games we'll probably see in a long time, I believe. Oh, very, very long time. Um, great, Two great defenses going up against two great quarterbacks. So, in my personal uh, opinion, it's going to be a tough I, one. Do you, do you think I I'm think crazy that, for saying this? Can I say something? Do you think that the Ravens are more of a complete team in terms of top tier, like just in talent and like production, than the 49ers? Um, because I think secondary is the big difference there. Yeah, that's a good question. So you can go both ways with it because if you look at the offense, like they're loaded on off, like San Francisco's with loaded wide on receiver, offense, right? Yeah, yeah. wide receiver, running back, like offensive line, the they have that tackle. all over. But if you look at the Ravens, yeah, it's like the football. They match up just like just as good as they do on defense as well. Like they got right. two great linebackers. Defensive line is really great. Honestly, it's gonna be a great matchup. Uh, so I'm, um, I'm just gonna go with my heart because I do want to see Lamar get to a Super Bowl and win a Super Bowl because that's my guy. So I'll go Ravens win that one. But I wouldn't be surprised if Mahomes, Andy Reid, and Travis Kelsey pulled out a W and got back to the Super Bowl and again. Because that's Swift. all they Don't freaking do. Don't yeah. forget T Swift. She's part of that team now. Yeah, yeah. About Conspiracy. that. Conspiracy. Um, no, I I agree with you, Hall, about. With KC, I do think this is probably one of the best games that we're going to see in a very long time. And unfortunately, I think this is the time that you get after Pat. I think Pat, obviously, is a Hall of Famer. He's one of the best quarterbacks ever. But if you're ever going to take Pat off of the, the, the pedestal, this is when you do it. Like, honestly, I think that if they do get beat this weekend, Kansas City's going to have to look at themselves and say, did we do everything that we possibly could to put enough around Pat to be able to contend against these kind of elite structured teams? And I'm not saying that Kansas City isn't, but Rasheed Rice, I had him on my football draft team. Like, obviously, he's a very good wide receiver, but he's not like the type where you're dealing with the Ravens, with Zay Flowers, with Odell, right? You're not dealing with Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle sort of thing. And so, I mean, obviously, Kelsey's there, but I'm just saying that I think the better structured overall of the Ravens is a really good situation. I think that Ravens versus 49ers is going to be one hell of a Super Bowl. And uh, I think all fans would be really happy to see that. Yeah. Um, so, I obviously, like everybody else, I think it will end up being the Ravens and 49ers, which is awesome, just as long as Baltimore doesn't win. And it's nothing against Baltimore. I love Lamar. I, I love I love that team. I just don't want my Baltimore Ravens friends talking more shit. <laughs> so, I don't want them to do much. But – uh I'm pulling for Lions 100. I want the Lions to go all the way, dude. And it's not even just the Ben Johnson thing. It's just how sick Dan Campbell is, and how tight that would be to watch Detroit <laughs> being like, "Rise up, like, hey, baby, we done it. Break out the red panties, we done it." Like that would be that would be awesome. That would be so sick to see Detroit. Also, speaking of which, Dad's out. Dad's got to drive an hour. All right, dude. Drive safe. Have a good night. Thank you for Hello. joining us. 
I'll see you. Yes, you too. I expect my check in the mail. All right, dude. Uh, (laughs) Hall, this next question is from Tony Franchise on Twitter. If you were if you were a reporter at the next head coach first press conference, what would be the first question you'd ask him? Um, I actually saw this question earlier, so I've been thinking about it, and I was like blown whenever uh, Mitch kind of talked about it. But my question would be. Are you a guy like what kind of offense are you planning on running in? Or are you a guy that likes a pocket passer like Jared Goff that likes to, you know, hit his mark in the pocket, stand tall and hit his targets? Or are you like a mobile quarterback guy? Like, can you like obviously you can mold your offense around the guy. But yeah, that would be my question. Like, what type of offense are you going to run? And quarterback wise, what's your preference as far as like a guy that can stand tall in the pocket and deliver it or a guy that can get out the side of the pocket, create, and kind of be that that the new age quarterback that everyone kind of wants in the NFL where mobility is a key. Um, my first question to the new head coach would be, um, since if this is his first time being a head coach, I would ask him, um, what gives you what gives you personally confidence going into this job to say that I can be a head coach? Is it the is it the fact of your experience having the knowledge brought down to you from other coaches brought through the years, or is it your social skills, being able to, to talk with players, being able to uh, relate with them? Is it being able to talk with management also with players? Like, would like to know what makes you feel confident in your ability that you can be the head coach for this football team to get them to the Super Bowl? Because that is literally the only question that matters. So um, how, what gives you confidence that you can get this done? Because we need to know what what really is what is going to get us to that point. You know what I mean? That's a great question, Tony. Now the next question question. we have is from just your average fly guy. He asks, I I present to you this question. It's draft day in New York calls offering you three first round picks, two second round picks and a third round pick to trade up from six to two. Are you in or out? And that would give us three total second rounders (laughs) this year and two first rounders through the, through three over the next two drafts. So would you get a first round this year? Do we get their first round pick this year? Their next first year. round pick next year and then the following year after that? So we're and then we're swapping from six to two. Are you doing it? Woo, that's a, I mean, that's so crazy of a haul. Like obviously this is like the time that to attack the quarterback position for this team. Just because again, new owner, new GM, new head coach. They're all gonna the GM, the head coach. All probably more than likely the quarterback all going to be on a five year deal, five year plan. So it would be the smartest thing would be to get the two locks, virtual locks as you want to call them, the uh, at the top of the draft. But for that haul, for a guy that just came from San Francisco, that they pretty much built it up through the draft and whatnot. I think that you you can't really turn that down just because that's so many draft picks to move back four spots. And then obviously you can still, if you do want to still go quarterback, you can target a guy like whoever the, uh, I don't know, third quarter, or not the third, the, uh, whoever the fourth quarterback is, maybe it's a uh, JJ McCarthy, uh, Penix. someone like that, who knows, but Penix. Yeah, maybe so. But, but I mean, at that point, you're probably not going to draft a quarterback. You're probably going to go whatever position best available, but either way, um, just that hall of picks to move back four spots, even though quarterback would be, is the should be the number one option in this draft. I think that you can't pass up a deal like that. Um, I would need to talk to Peters uh, and I would need to talk to the head coach first. And I would need to make sure that they can go about this season, that they would be comfortable without having a quarterback drafted in the first round and that they would be able to work with Sam Howell, get the most out of Sam Howell and make this a competitive football team, not in the business of sitting here and just allowing things to continue like they have been. I want to get better. I need to be able to see that there has been progress from one to two. And that's what I want to see this year. If you could promise me that Ben, Ben Johnson, whoever Slowick and Adam Peters can make this football team be the best that it can be with Sam Howell, then yeah, I'll take, I'll take that trade. But if we're sitting here saying they were in the, we're in this position for the first time and we're actually in the position to pull the trigger on a guy like that and you know that you could get something with this with the new head coach with the think about this the entire organization for the first time ever everybody being in lockstep on one player guiding your franchise literally Washington never had that under Dan Snyder there was always somebody saying no don't do it dude don't do it don't do it and then Snyder right. saying no I got it you know there was always somebody trying to stab you in the back 
for the first time, this would be the first time in our my lifetime, really, my lifetime, that the entire organization would be behind a player, invested in making it happen for the football team behind that player. And that's what I'm really excited about. And I think that that's probably a really good process to go down. But I love the idea of trading back. It's just my question is, at what cost? You know what I mean? See, that's the thing. That's where I'm like the only thing where I'm like, again, I'm 90, I'm 100% drafted quarterback. Like we've all talked about how often are you going to be picking in the top five with a such a rich quarterback draft, especially a number two with such a rich quarterback draft coming in where there could be three guys that could all potentially have the abilities to go number one. You know what I'm saying? So with the talent to go number one. But the only thing I would be like, like, again, I, it, me as a gym, I wouldn't do it. I would still stick to my guns and take my guy. But the the other opposite, like, uh, argument you could make is, okay, well, now I got two first-round picks, and I got a first-round pick in 24, a first-round pick in 25, all those second-round picks, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You can package that, whatever spot you land in the draft in 25, right. I guess it would be. Yep, you're you right. can package those to move up to get a quarterback, yep. whether it's Quinn Ewers or Shadir Sanders or – whoever the, the top quarterbacks coming out next year will be. But again, like I'd be, that's, I'd be down with this scenario. If you told me you're looking at Arch Manning in two years, then, <laughs> I, you know, I would be on board. I would say, okay, then for two years, we have to use those draft picks to literally build a juggernaut. So when right. Arch steps in here, we're ready to go and we're stockpiling the picks. So nobody could tell us no. But know? again, we all know how it goes. Injuries happen. Right. Guys don't declare. They, some guys like draft stock falls, right. whatever, maybe off the field stuff happens. Guys, teams trade up in front of you, you know what I'm saying? So, and like, you can, if you can predict the future, I'd be like, oh, hell yeah. Like, take that right. trade, get your guy on 25 with all those draft picks. But I mean, at this point, like we all talked about, like I said, you're at number two. I mean, we've been at number two twice in the past, what is it, four years at this point? When does that rarely ever happen for us? We're always like somewhere in the teens picking because we've been mediocre forever. You got to strike on quarterback now. Yep, I totally agree with you. Now, the latest uh, news came in from ESPN from Adam Schefter. The commanders are not expected to hire a head coach until next week after Sunday's t conference title games. No crap, Adam. No <laughs> crap. And that's why I think it's so funny about all these national media guys coming out and say, oh, I have a source saying that Ben Johnson's the favorite. <clears throat> like your source is you reading it. Like we, we all read the same right. thing, dude. You know what I mean? Like exactly. he's trying to make himself Trust warm. me. You know how many times I've seen that? Like, yeah. oh, sources is blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you just saw the same tweet that I saw right. an hour ago. It's or an whatever educated it was. guess, and, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying like. So like that, the funny thing is two weeks ago, I saw that Nikki Giobala was in Detroit. And I literally had this thought. I was like, why is, oh, <clears throat> oh, I was like, okay, now I was putting two and two together because like the post was getting like, familiar with the ownership and around here. So I was put, I was like, okay, that's where this is going. But then it seems like in the past week, everyone's like, oh yeah, well, yeah, it's, of course, dude. If you've been reading the tea leaves at this point, you know what's happening. What's coming down the pipeline? Right. All right, everybody. I can't thank you enough for joining us for this episode. Um, the colonel did not submit a question to us. He did not get it in time. I was no, I was waiting for that. I was like, this is the first uh, time ever I think the colonel hasn't got a question on here. Well, yesterday his father passed away. My wife's grandfather passed oh, away. Damn, uh, sorry to hear that. Time. Sorry to hear that, Colonel. Lots damn. of prayers. Uh, we'll be traveling to Florida here soon uh, to be able to go <laughs> uh, celebrate the life of Poppy. And so, if you guys can, you know, say a prayer for the colonel, for my wife, if you can, her family, and loved ones of Poppy and for Poppy as well. He's a, he was in the Secret Service uh, under Reagan. Very, very awesome person and a great man. And so if you guys can, we'd really appreciate the prayers. All right, everybody. That's going to wrap us up for this episode. We will see you again on Sunday. We will see you then. I'm Kyle. I'm Hall. And if you made it this far, you're a champion. All right, everybody. We'll <laughs> see you then. Washington football. Woo! What's up, everyone? This is Kyle from the Burgundy Zone. We are releasing our own merch to support the show. If you want to rock the Burgundy Zone logo or you want to see Reed's face on your shirt, we got it. We're starting with t-shirts, hoodies, and zip up. So if you're a fan of the show, make sure you snag one before they are gone. Check out the link in our bio on Instagram, or you can find the link in the description of the video. Thanks again for all your support. Until next time.